We've been covering since last Friday the second armed SWAT team raid on one of the few American companies uh, engaged in fine craftsmanship, and that, of course, is Gibson Guitar, that I know a lot of my friends and family uh, dearly love, and their classic Les Pauls. And they've been raided a few years ago, won't tell them why, been raided again. And uh, now they're uh, learning it doesn't matter if they get the wood legally or lawfully. Now the police are saying, hey, we may start raiding musicians' homes. We, when you try to travel out of the country, it doesn't matter if it's a 50-year-old guitar. They're taking it, but not just Gibsons. Now they're talking about guns with the wood that's on them. If you can't prove that it's not some endangered wood from a foreign country, it's gone. Your furniture. The whole police state system wants to expand. And you've seen the green police ads on TV where they're arresting folks for light bulbs. Actually, in Australia, they do home inspections and are talking about arresting people if you've got a crack in your window. This is the total takeover of society. And Henry Juskowitz is the CEO of Gibson. And here's one of their press releases. Gibson says, wood is illegal if U.S. workers uh, produce it. Uh, continuing here, guitar frets, environmental enforcement leaves musicians in fear. I saw an Atlantic article where they had the headline, how do you turn musicians into tea, parter, tea partiers? Take their guitars. Gibson Guitar CEO raided by feds to cost company two to three million dollars. Here's another one, breaking it down. CEO of Gibson Guitar, a Republican donor, Democrat competitor, uses same wood, just like Obama's contributors are exempt from having to have the government-run health care, which is an unfair trade advantage. Just like General Electric's power plants are exempt from the new carbon taxes. Uh, joining us again is the CEO, and I appreciate uh, him coming on. Uh, Mr. Juskowitz, thank you for coming on today. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Well, so much has happened. I saw your press conference, and, and it seems like you're really informed. Uh, you've got the floor. Tell us exactly what's happened. Well, um, it was a, a normal day, and, you know, it started normally. We were producing guitars, and, uh, you know, very early in the morning, uh, we had something like 20 to 30 armed uh, SWAT-like agents descend on uh, three of our manufacturing plants in our corporate headquarters. Uh, they evacuated uh, all the employees, several hundred people, uh, respectively into parking lots and streets, uh, shut down the manufacturing facilities, uh, started pouring through them, confiscating uh, raw materials in the manufacturing facilities, paperwork, uh, started uh, grabbing some hard drives, uh, copying, uh, imaging hard drives, and uh, generally shutting down our business. Do you think that this could be uh, political uh, sabotage or espionage? Because it's been confirmed that General Motors uh, franchises in Minnesota and other areas, when they nationalized General Motors, that people that weren't Democratic Party donors that they had their uh, franchise taken away and given to others. Uh, you, you heard me, sir, just mention the fact that 2,000 plus big companies that are donors have been given government uh, health care uh, waivers. We know General uh, 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 Motors has also gotten government bailout money, the same thing uh, with uh, uh, General Electric. Uh, I mean, do you think that some of that could be at play here? I, I really don't know. I, I'd hate to say anything without any uh, you know, specific knowledge. Uh, but I will say um, that we are not the only company that is buying uh, Indian rosewood and ebony, which is the issue here. Uh, other competitor companies are indeed buying it and have not been uh, in any way impacted, uh, contacted, or otherwise harassed. Um, so the fact that we are uniquely selected uh, that def definitely makes me suspicious as to why uh, that's the case. Now, I noticed in your press conference, uh, you talked about some of the acts that sign us on to basically Agenda 21 international law. 
and that uh, under the Lacey Act and other things, that even if foreign countries change laws retroactively, now you're under that, and that specifically uh, they don't like us buying wood from foreign countries and then working it. Right. That's the, the real irony. I mean, we have a, an outstanding American labor force. We have been hiring people at the very uh you know depths of the economic problems we we have hired over 580 uh, american workers new jobs uh we are very successful at exporting products 60 percent of our product uh, goes overseas uh these these are things that normally you know countries get pretty excited about and uh and you're considered a pretty uh, good guy and a good citizen when when you, you cause that to happen. Uh, the fact is the government's position is that uh, it, it's not about the wood and illegal logging, it's about uh, the labor content in the wood. And the government apparently prefers that that labor content be outside the United States. Um, just uh, kind of, of a bizarre thing. Again, we're talking to the CEO of Gibson Guitar. Sir, even Congressman Dennis Kucinich on CNN last night pointed out that the head of the president's economic council, the former head of General Electric, uh, is actually getting uh, incentives to move General Electric's X-ray division out of the U.S. Uh, as I said, uh, three of our factories were paid for uh, with the bailout of General Motors to move them to Eastern Europe, China, and Brazil. So that is undoubtedly what's happening. The congressman uh, has the headline here, Obama's jobs are expert at creating foreign jobs. Uh, can you speak to that? Well, all, all I can say is that uh, this is costing us money. It's making us less competitive and it, it will certainly impact, you know, jobs here in the United States. And uh, it, it's really making me question whether we're valued, uh, you know, in, in the U.S. Well, don't let them win, sir. Don't let them run you out to China because then you've got to go through one of the Chinese generals. And that's why the, the big cats, fat cats, did this deal decades ago with China. They admit it, where only select operations are allowed to move there. Certainly you can move to Mexico or, or somewhere else, but I think once you're in their sights, they're going to keep coming after you. I think it's up to the American people if they want any industry or craftsmanship left in this country to come to your aid, uh, what can we do uh, to, to help Gibson uh, Guitar stay open and stay in the United States? Well, we're, we're hoping that people uh, call their congressmen, uh, their senators, the, their politicians, and, and let them know that this is not fair and not right, and uh, to do whatever they can, not only to address uh, the problem we have as, as Gibson, but I think this is a nationwide problem where uh, we need to address this much broader than just our individual situation. Uh, this is happening with other companies in, in various areas uh, where regulation uh, is creeping in and, and being applied irrationally uh, and hostily. And uh, I think that needs to be uh, put an end to. I think we need to look at what is good for our nation, what is good for our people and our workers. Sir, in 1984, a fictitious uh, nightmare police state scenario, Winston doesn't know what he's being accused of. And of course, in the famous uh, uh, a novel that uh, Kafka wrote, and we get the term Kafka-esque because in, in the end, he's convicted of a crime and sentenced to death and doesn't even know why he was sentenced to death. And more and more, we're seeing that people are being sentenced and never even finding out. It's just they're told national security. And I know you were rated a few years ago. You've been rated again. And you can't even find out when you talk to them why you're being rated. I mean, uh, in the Constitution, you, you have an ability to know what you're being charged with and to face your accuser. That's right. And, and, and it's pretty bizarre to be in our predicament. Uh, you know, not, not much I can say except it's a nightmare. We're talking to Henry Juskowitz, uh, the CEO of Gibson Guitar.
And of course, you can go to Gibson.com and see all the latest press releases. Sir, I want to, instead of, you know, sitting here asking you questions, I'd like to give you the floor because in the press conference, I saw a lot of media there, but uh, the audio wasn't too good on the YouTube version. So I'd like to give you the floor here, you know, to really speak about what you think is most important uh, I, I would also like to ask you about the armed nature of it, how you were treated like you were criminals instead of working with our industry and uh, saying, hey, uh, you know, the, you might do this a little bit better. Uh, but I noticed that with the vitamin industry, they tried that. And now the government's trying to shut them down. So uh, unfortunately, they don't want to work with you. And even if you try, they're going to come after you. These are parasites who could care less about our economy or our future. But 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 you've got the floor, sir. Well, I think I think you're a lot more eloquent than I am, and, and uh, you know all I can say is that that in fact the government is using uh, you know drug enforcement hostile tech techniques. Uh, we are just a guitar factory. Uh, we're we're a, a, a small business uh, that's very successful. We're hiring people. Uh, we are competing successfully overseas and exporting, uh, and we're talking about, you know, an import and export paperwork issue uh, that should not, re you know, be dealt with with people with loaded guns and bulletproof vests, uh, intimidation techniques. Uh, we've had hourly employees. Uh, put into rooms with five or six armed people and interrogated without their attorney present. Uh, you, you know, you're talking about really hostile action, and no one has come to us and said, fellas, you know, here's the problem. We have an issue with this. Let's deal with it. Uh, their first response was SWAT raids with guns, and they shut our business down. They injured us. It was an attack, uh, and we have no recourse. Uh, you know, there there isn't even a judicial recourse. Uh, we are trying to fight this in court, um, and the government is trying to stay the judicial proceedings so that we can't even fight and get our day in court. Um, so anyway, I think we are being treated unfairly, uh, way disproportionate to any possible uh, cause. I think that their ability to do that really, we have to think about what that means uh, for our democracy and for, for other people who, who could be put in this exact same situation. And so, you know, I, I asked for, for reason and I asked for fairness. Well, you're not going to get that from the uh, federal Gestapo anymore. They admit they want a post-industrial United States. That's what the whole green tyranny, carbon tax is about. Only their friends are going to be able to operate now in America. Al Gore has said it. Uh, they've all stated it. And uh, this, is their, this is their program. This is the mafia takeover of America. We're talking to Henry Juskowitz, the CEO of Gibson Qatar, a growing... American company, 60% foreign. Uh, I know Gibson gets more and more popular. They have an entertainment office here in Austin. The, the, they're bucking the trend with American craftsmanship, just like Harvey, uh, Harley Davidson and others. And the system does not like this, and they harass every major American company that is left that's not an insider. But, sir, you brought up something that's the heart of the matter. We've seen raids on dairy farms that sell raw milk to Whole Foods and people legally and raw, raw milk cheese. And they do the same thing. They show up and say, we're going to say all your cows have mad cow and kill all of them unless you sign a form admitting you did something illegal. They just make it up. Or they show up to Amish and he literally put guns to their heads and scream and cuss and say, admit you're guilty. I mean, they're worse than Gestapo. I mean, it, it, the, you know, the, the, the Gestapo were polite till they got you to a camp. Uh, the ATF had just resigned, caught shipping guns uh, into Mexico, then blamed the Second Amendment here, caught perjuring himself. It turns out the White House ordered it. I think we've got to come to grips with these are really nasty people uh, or they're going to continue to have the moral high ground. But you mentioned that they got employees in there without their lawyers 
and began these interrogations, that is unconstitutional. That is official oppression. That is illegal. And I hope that you look to get on the offensive with a civil suit against these people and that organizations come to your aid, sir. We are looking for every uh, legal remedy and, uh, you know, and we'll go to the Supreme Court if we have to. Well, I want to say this. We all hang together or we hang separate. You know who said that? Benjamin Franklin. He, yeah, you know, one of our founding fathers. I don't think our founding fathers had this in mind uh, for their democracy. Well, our republic is in deep trouble, sir. We're going to break here in a moment. We'll come back and do five more minutes. You've been very gracious with your time. But specifically, what more can you tell us about the getting people in rooms alone with, with armed, uh, armed green police? Well, you, you know, not much more needs to be said. I mean, it was a pretty frightening situation. People didn't know. These, these were ordinary workers on the factory floor. Uh, they were pretty freaked out. And, uh, you know, in addition to that, uh, several of these people in, in subsequent uh, interrogations by the Justice Department were threatened with five years in prison. Uh, five years in prison, you know, and these are ordinary production people going about their business. Um, you know, they have nothing to gain, uh, and they're threatened with prison. Terms. Henry Juskowitz, stay with us. I want to give you the inside baseball of what's happening. You're a smart guy, but I want to warn you of what they're trying to do when we come back from this quick break. Folks, they're trying to take down one of the last American companies that's trying to keep this country working and moving. This is Treason, CEO of Gibson Guitar with two factories right there in Tennessee and offices all over the United States and larger cities, like right here in Austin, Texas. I've got friends that have been over to their little showroom and bought a guitar. That's almost as bad as people getting arrested for selling lemonade all over the country uh, for 10 cents a glass uh, or uh, gardens being banned uh, in people's yards up in... Uh, up in Michigan, sir, I want to warn you, and I'm sure your lawyers have already warned you, the feds are 98% of the time they convict whoever they go ahead and charge. It's because they have kept uh, basically Soviet-style juries that will send a ham sandwich to the gas chamber uh, in order to do so. But, but public pressure has been known to back them off from the charges. And as you said in the first few days, they wouldn't tell you why. Now they're saying the Lacey Act, international law, it's that your laborers were working the wood and they can change these international laws anytime they want and then say, well, the laws have changed now, now you're under it. But the fact that they're going after factory floor craftsmen and women shows that they're just trying to terrorize them to lie about you and they'll say, we're going to let you off now, just say this and they'll convince them, then they'll go in and testify. And so you are in grave danger and everybody's got to get the word out uh, about this. What's your take on that? Well, uh, that may very well be the fact. I mean, they are being threatened uh, and, and uh, the coercive techniques were, were used. And um, fortunately, you know, we have good people here at Gibson and everyone here is, uh, you know, really feels terrible about this. We all love the company. Uh, we've done nothing wrong, and uh, the intimidation isn't working. Um, By the way, th I mean, these floor workers, uh, I mean, they have nothing to do with the importation and working of it. Everybody knows they're totally innocent. You know, that's that's right. I mean, <clears throat> uh, I'm the head guy of the company. If they, if, if they want to come after someone, they should come after management. And, uh, uh, you know, it just really sent chills down my spine for them to go after you know, normal people that, you know, don't deal with lawyers and, and they don't have a, a squad of legal people. And in fact, uh, you know, the company didn't have to support those people. They, they could have been on their own. Uh, you, you know, if we did support them, we hired independent lawyers for them uh, to protect their own personal interest. But that didn't have to happen. It's just not right. And by the way, this fishing expedition is now going into its third year. This started in 2009. Yes, sir. 
Wow. Uh, I mean, I see it all the time where they throw the book at somebody who gets a drop of motor oil in their backyard. But then we're shipping all our jobs to China where they just dump the toxic waste right in the ocean. I mean, how is America supposed to operate with these uh, all, all these new offices that have been erected and the swarms of agents that have been sent out to eat out our substance? Uh, it's, it's very difficult to do business uh, with, with, with these issues facing you. Now, have you seen an upswing in orders, though, with the people sympathetically trying to support American jobs? Uh, a lot of people have been calling in. Yes, we have seen an upswing in orders. Of course, it's only been uh, a couple of days since the raid. Uh, but, but people are just pouring letters and support in from all over the country and all over the world. And yes, we have seen an uptick in, in uh, people buying product. So they certainly realize that it's important to have jobs here in America. And, and uh, in closing, sir, they're claiming that it's because you were working the wood, that it's able to have jobs here. Essentially, that's right. You know what? We're going to break for one minute. I just want you to finish that American point. Companies are being harassed and shut down everywhere. The harassment of even small manufacturing companies in Central Texas is off the charts. Fed, state, local, new taxes. It is vicious. And they just moved to Mexico and China where they can pretty much execute their employees if they want to. That's the type of globalism we're talking about. And later we're going to get more into Feds are now saying people that print up their own silver or gold coins, commemorative gold coin companies, totally legal, even AP admits it. They're going to go to jail, and they're saying they may start going to your houses. And, and even the Associated Press says, but this isn't illegal. The government is out of control. And they're expanding into raw milk and guitars and wood and everything else. We're talking to the CEO of Gibson Guitar, Henry um, Juskowitz. Um, and, and i got to say, sir, I admire you for staying in America, even though you could undoubtedly make giant profits overseas. Uh, I want to commend you on keeping the quality. I've talked to a lot of musicians. They say it's, it's the best. And I want to commend you for saying, hey, you want to come after somebody, government? Come after me, not somebody that sweeps the floors, not somebody that carves the wood or puts the guitar strings on. Uh, this is so cowardly and dastardly that they're going after and threatening and intimidating with their guns, your people, to try to get them to make something up about you. It just shows how wicked these folks are, so I want to commend you. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me on the show and, and, and giving us uh, some time. Well, I'll tell you right now, um, I intend to buy a Gibson guitar because if they, who knows, they might win, they might shut you down. It's a collector's item, but uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with uh, Jimmy Vaughn. I know he's involved with other guitars, but yeah. I know a lot of musicians, and I think all of them need to stand up together or, as I said, hang separate because I've read in the news, Wall Street Journal admits people with guitars that are you know, even Trigger. Uh, Willie Nelson won't go out of the country with Trigger, even though it's 60 years old. Uh, because they'll take his wooden guitar when he leaves the country. Yep, yep, it's, uh, it's a travesty. Well, in closing, sir, specifically with the Lacey Act, because they, they wouldn't tell you at first what it was about, they're now saying, look, we're not denying you have certified wood that isn't endangered from a group that's certified under law. We're saying you work the wood, and that's illegal. Right, and uh, that, that, that is just <clears throat> so ironic. Um, it's not what this country is about. Well, specifically, you've got a press release out on it, but what are they, how are they saying it's illegal to buy wood from overseas and then, and then lay a hand to it? Well, basically, uh, what they're trying to do is to enforce the law of, of a different country, in this case, India. And India has a, a particular law where if, if raw wood is not, uh, completed, completely worked on in India, it, it can't be exported. In other words, India is saying, don't take our raw materials. We have to do the work on the raw materials uh, in this particular case. And so if uh, we bought the exact same wood and Indian laborers completed it, then we would be able to do what we do. Uh, but if American laborers complete it, then it's illegal.
Unbelievable. This is the deindustrialization, and, and India is part of these free trade deals. I mean, we just take their products. India's taken most of our jobs on record, and this is the thanks we get. This is a, sir, are you aware of Agenda 21 and, and how the Lacey Act's part of this world government system? No, I'm not. But you're under world government now, aren't you? You've got India dictating to you. Well, you know, the, the, the Indian government hasn't even made an issue of this. It's, it's our, our own U.S. government that's making the issue. Uh, you know, we, we have lots of paperwork from the Indian government that said that the export was legal uh, from their point of view. So it's uh, all our government. Well, that's the CEO, Henry uh, Juskowitz of Gibson, Gibson.com. Sir, we'll talk to you again tomorrow night on the TV show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Alex.